African Safari Wildlife Park is a wild experience with over 800 exotic animals. Our drive through safari features giraffes, zebras, deer, elk, alpacas, and even a white bison, all of which you can feed right from your vehicle. Walk on the wild side with the Zoo It All Pass and feed kangaroos, porcupines, tortoises, and rabbits. Step into our aviary adventure and hand feed budgies for a memorable experience. Check out our live educational shows or ride a camel. Create memories that will last a lifetime at the Ohio Safari Park, African Safari Wildlife Park in Port Clinton. Well, happy Friday, everyone. Happy, happy Friday. Well, thank you. Well, thank you for being here. Well, no, thank you. Well, no, thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> no, happy Friday, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the morning show right here on Main Street TV. We're so happy that you tuned in with us this morning, and uh, you may be watching the replay of this show because, as we speak, the Olympic opening ceremonies are on and we've been watching it over on the other monitor yeah we've been cheating we don't yeah. have been watching us we've been watching them, them. yeah <laughs> so there was a very greasy man that walked through a second ago i'm still baffled by it okay i mean like i don't understand it but okay all right i mean he was a very nice looking greasy man <laughs> okay <laughs> Was he greasy or oiled or what? I, all of the above. All of the above, okay. Like if he had done a giant swan dive from the high dive at the Hillcrest pool into a vat of Crisco okay. in the 90 degree weather. That's him. And jumped out and gone, ta-da! That's what he looked like. Very strange. Okay. I don't know if he just runs and he doesn't want anyone to catch him or <laughs> Maybe, just maybe, it wasn't grease. Maybe he's that sparkly. Could have been ice cream. You know, it's National Ice Cream Day. No. -uh. uh huh. He could have made himself into a sundae. <laughs> That's right. It would have looked better than what he did to himself. Yeah. So, okay, National Ice Cream Day. Actually, it's National Vanilla Ice Cream Day. Oh. It's sort of the gateway to all the serious desserts. <laughs> yeah, I mean, vanilla is just the best ice cream because it's just a vessel to put all the other junk on That's top true. of, right? I mean, first it's a small mini vanilla ice cream cone. Yes. And then years later, it's a great big bubble. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I will have to say that there's a lot of people that, that mess with the bubble around here and, mm. and don't put the vanilla ice cream on it. But really? I think that's just taking away from the rest of the amazing components of the bubble. Yeah. Like if you put Rocky Road ice cream in your bubble instead of vanilla, then it's kind of overshadowing those delicious sure. nuts and that homemade chocolate sauce and all that. It is a delicate balance of sweet, salty, and savory. It is yes. amazing. Yes. Yeah. But we digress. So National Vanilla Ice Cream Day. Yeah. Does that mean we need to celebrate? Yes, we do. And we can just go straight to the top. We can do a bubble. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody call Mika and tell her we need yeah. delivery this morning. We're going to start right at the end of the rainbow. We're going for the bubble. We're going for the bubble. I mean, go big or go home, right? That's right. It's, it's also National Refreshments Day. Refreshment. Well, refreshment can be very relative. I know. You know, I don't know why they've done this, but they had this wonderful name, refreshment stand, and then somebody decides they're going to call it a concession stand. Yeah, no. I mean, refreshment when, sounds so when it, much better. When I do refreshments, I make no concessions. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's not one of the, it's not one of the I same. I know. Anyway. You feel refreshed at the refreshment stand. Refreshment <clears throat> sounds like an oasis right. that you, you come upon. You feel like you're going to have to pull out your credit card at a concession stand. Right. <laughs> All right. Refreshment is something that you can look forward to and enjoy. So, but yes, no, refreshment is very relative. So it could be water. It could be a popsicle. Sure. It could be beer. Yeah. It could be any number of things. Great big old pretzel. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And a beer. <laughs> what a, and a beer. <laughs> and the beer cheese. That's right. <laughs> what? Yeah. 
All so of anyway, that goes into refresh refreshment. yourself today on National Refreshment Day. I think then, that's a fantastic and idea. And then top it off with some vanilla, vanilla ice cream. And all could go one in the same. That's right. It all ties together. Sounds like a plan to me. <laughs> yes. And you know what we missed a couple of days ago because we were talking about the fair? And I have a story about it, but we'll get to that in okay. a little bit. Was It was, I believe, two or three days ago, National Hot Dog Day. Yeah, we did kind of miss that. Yeah. But I have a really interesting, um, some statistics about hot dogs that we can get to. Okay, we could do that. Because they're really, really interesting. I mean, and they're they're good. They're fun to fix. Cook them on the grill. Yeah, they're unique. Easy to eat. You can pile just about anything you want on a hot dog. Yep. As says some of the statistics that okay. I have. Okay. Yeah. All right. We'll talk about that. Yeah. It's also National Spoonerism Day. I don't know what that means, John. Spoonerism. What's a spoonerism? <clears throat> well, spoonerism was started by a professor. His name was, actually, he was a reverend, but he was okay. a teacher, Reverend William Archibald Spooner, and he would make mistakes, and they started calling his mistakes spoonerisms. Instead of saying crushing blow, he would say blushing crow. That, that's a spoonerism. I see. So just kind of mixing up the first parts yeah, of the words. Or like the kiss to marry, uh, cuss the bride. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> or the well-boiled icicle instead of a well-oiled bicycle. <laughs> <clears throat> that kind of thing. You know, you're a, you're a fighting a liar. On the grill instead of lighting, lighting a fire, the fire. fire on the, so that's spoonerism. The so, okay. So if you... We've all been there. And what you can do, and the nice thing about spoonerism is, let's take, for instance, and it happens to all of us, you know, something happens and words come out of our mouth that probably shouldn't come out of our mouth. Mm -hmm. And you could just say someone, it's actually, a, it's not a bad word, it's a spoonerism. It's a spoonerism. That's Didn't right. you know? I was participating <laughs> in the day. There Hello. You go. <clears throat> so... National and happy to you Spoonerism Day. Well, thank you. You're we, we shall participate later. Yes, or probably will. during this show. Yeah. Because neither one of us can talk plain. We pal. Sometimes. We pal. So separate. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe we need some more of those refreshments. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Then we can, there, true. Then we can talk, talk <coughs> straight. Excuse me. <laughs> That's funny. So okay. what else you got? Well, I have, I thought this was apropos. Um, they have some resurgence of backyard games since the pandemic. You know, a lot Makes of people, sense. a lot of people have gone to entertaining themselves in the backyard. Yes. And the big things to come back and they're selling quite well is bocce ball. Okay. And of course, cornhole. Was yes. huge because you could actually distance and play sure. cornhole. <clears throat> I thought would come back, but I never did because there is distance involved, and that's uh, what do they call those things? Oh, yard charts. Yeah, those would be the things that you get stuck in your forehead. Yeah, when, long yeah. spiky things. I mean, who, who was the brilliant person that decided that was a good idea? Yeah, that's. <laughs> And I play that game, and I'm thinking to myself, I'm actually standing here, and someone's throwing a, a metal piercing rod at me. Like literally a dart, like a <laughs> right. javelin a at jav my forehead. Right. And that's okay. But it's it was a fun game, <laughs> and it does create distance. <laughs> yeah, like Look everybody out. run. When here it comes. <laughs> no, I, I never did understand why that was a thing. Um, I think that it was, <laughs> a, people had, because you just throw the ring on your yard and you did, there was no, not too much assembly required. Yeah, until and, the thing went through your foot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, true. <clears throat> but hey, I mean, we did a lot of things back then. That's what, true. I mean, we, we all survived wearing bi riding bicycles without helmets and I know, bell all bottoms. kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah, right. Speaking of, that's what Jenna's wearing today. Oh, really? Cool. 
She has on her groovy tie-dye bell bottoms it today. Brings back memories. Yes. See, I was cool when it wasn't supposed to be cool. <laughs> <laughs> you were bell bottoms when bell bottoms wasn't cool. That's like right. Crystal Gale. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> No, that's funny. No, the, the lawn games, I have noticed like in watching um, a lot of HGTV, which I end up watching a lot, that when they're remodeling houses, it always seems like they put um, a bocce ball court, Yeah, you know, out in the yard or whatever. Uh -huh. They're doing That's yards. popular. Yeah. I know corn horn, corn hole is very, that was a spoonerism, corn hole is very <laughs> popular. And uh, <clears throat> it is. The one game that is popular, but always seemed like so much trouble, was badminton. I was going to bring that up to you. Okay. I never understood that. Because it takes like three hours to set the net up. Sure. And it and, and inevitably is in a big knot. Yeah, because when it first comes out of the package, it's okay. But then when you put it away, next time you bring it out. Yes. It's all a tangled mess, yeah. and the pole gets shoved through the nets and whatever. And then, so you get your racket, and you get this badminton thing, and somebody hits it, and then no one ever returns it. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's if so you're not weird. Good, if you're not good at it, nothing ever happens. No. <laughs> Just. <laughs> and the guy on the other side of the net's grown old. <laughs> right, and then... It lands in front of them, and then they pick it up, and then they hit it back, and it lands in front of them. Yeah. And it, pretty soon, it's in the gutter, and game's over. Yep, that's it. <laughs> Time to go inside. Or a nice wind gust comes by and really? takes that little thing away. Okay. Yeah, I never did understand badminton. Right. Like, I get volleyball, because you're playing with your hands, mm -hmm. and it's like a ball. It's not too bad. Yeah. But badminton, no. I'll bet Jenna's like, what the heck are you all talking about? Have you heard of any of these things that we're talking about? Yes, okay. Okay. We're not too old. Then. We're not, I guess not. Okay. Speaking of summer, mm -hmm. this latest survey says two thirds of Americans say summer loses its magic when you get old or older. Really? They say the survey said the prime time, the prime age for enjoying summer was 14. Really? Yeah. Why would that be? I don't know. They just say that because of responsibilities and your job, you know, summer just isn't what it used to be. I mean, it does make sense. So, you know, when you're in school, you obviously get summer vacation. And maybe as you're 14, you have a little bit of independence and no responsibility. So you can go out with your friends and whatever, sure. but you still don't have to get that job yet and all of that. And the 14-year-olds listed the, the activities they like was hanging with friends, of course. Uh-huh. Bonfires, camping, swimming, and family reunions. Now, what 14-year-old do you know <laughs> that lists as one of their favorite summer activities a family reunion? None. So throw that Who did they survey talk out to? the window. Yeah. I have no clue. Where's <laughs> video games and all of that? <laughs> Of course, I remember one summer when I went on a hike with my friends and we found this dead body. Oh, no, that's a movie. I yeah, that was... <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> that was over by the train tracks. There yeah. were leeches involved. It was real bad. Yeah. <laughs> we, uh, we actually talked about doing an adventure like that. Not to go find a dead body or anything, okay. but just to do like a follow the train tracks and end up camping somewhere and coming back. But we never did it. Probably best, because okay. I don't know where we would have gone. <laughs> where are you Train tracks go? to where? <laughs> and where are you going to go? <laughs> Just saying. By the way, wave to Madagascar. They're going by. Hi, Madagascar. <laughs> they have a hiss, hissing cockroaches there, I hear. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just saying. So, yeah. It is fair week, and we'll go to that here in a minute, yeah. too. Been to the fair. Had a good time. Yeah. Worked at the fair. You did? Yeah. Our Wilson Rotary Club and Jackson Rotary oh. does it too. Uh, as a fundraiser and to help the fair too, we man the gates. Oh, okay. So you take a shift and you man the gates. I'm usually in the back. 
the back gate. I like that. Okay. You you don't get to sit down, but it's uh, uh, that's where all of the campers, 4-H'ers, they come in and out and all the trucks and you get to hear all of the excuses of why I don't have a pass or a sticker. Which is what... It's very creative. Huh? Right. <laughs> I mean, I had to do that on Monday. I don't... Or what what day were we up there? Monday. Monday. Okay. I had to do that on Monday. You had to talk I had to talk own. my way in because okay. I didn't have a pass. <laughs> Did you come in the back or the yes. front? Yes. Okay. Well, that was a Rotarian. Well, a Rotarian. I'll let you in. Aha. Uh-huh. Well, it was... Um, yeah. So, luckily, she knew... That I was not fibbing because I said we're here to do what the morning show. What time did you show. arrive? Oh, about eight thirty in okay. the morning, and and um, she said, "I know you're supposed to have a pass, though." I said, "No one gave me one. I'm so sorry." <laughs> but uh, I said, "I promise we'll be out of here at 10. Okay. Not here to steal anything or free <laughs> entertainment. I promise not to have any fun. I pro- yeah, I will not have any fun while I'm here. <laughs> Although we had a lot of fun, didn't we, Jenna? We had a good time we're up good. at the fair and doing our show from up there and um you know james did such a good job of setting everything up and um you know the fair board and all the kids were so uh generous to yeah. come and and talk with us during our morning show so yeah it was fun good, good. times wonderful it brought back lots of memories lots of memories it's huh? like just yesterday i was there yeah. it's just way nicer now so i'm a little surly about that <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute, none of these buildings, none of these facilities were right. here when I was a 4 h None of those new show arenas or barns. We used to do the fair, I mean, broadcast from the fair, as you remember. Oh, I do. All day. Yes. All day. Here's your microphone, go to the fair yeah. at 9 in the morning, and don't come back till 9 at night. We would start, I remember, with the Mary Lynn show, Mary Lynn Vitito. Yes. Then- and uh, she would do her show from the fair. And then it was all day. I mean, spinning records. Yep. Trying to say something. Witty and fair-like. Yeah, witty yeah. and fair-like. That usually you weren't that successful, especially after six or seven hours. <laughs> <laughs> I can remember, I didn't bring this up the other day when we were talking about the fair, but um, do you remember the WKOV mystery fair person? Oh, yes. That was always so fun. We would load somebody up with some cash, and they would be the mystery fair person. And if someone identified them, they would the mystery fair person would hand them the cash, yeah. which was kind of cool, except for the guy who kept getting stopped time after time after time. <laughs> Are you the mystery fair person? No. <laughs> Well, and they would do it just like the cycle search or whatever, if yeah. you don't remember. And you would do clues every day about who the mystery fair yeah, person was. Right. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Well, and then it, but then it just got to the point where a bunch of smart A's went around <laughs> asking everybody they just saw if they any, were the mystery anybody fair person. Anybody and everybody. So I'm if you like, were the, you were the mystery fair person, you had to. You had to hide. <laughs> keep it low key. Until <laughs> you wanted to be found. Right. But no, that was a fun one. And uh, yeah, I can remember. I can remember being up at the fair, being little, and you guys going up there with you guys, and it being so flipping hot. hot. I mean, so hot. You couldn't breathe. And then you'd go over to like the fair building, and someone would be, some politician would pass out those little, you know, fans Fans. on a popsicle stick. And you'd be like, it's not helping, but it's better. And we'd always. (laughs) Received really not good. A, a merciful gift from the lemonade guy. Yeah. <laughs> and it, the people would start feeling sorry for us, you know, Here, stick as this. we melt before their very eyes. Stick this co- snow cone somewhere. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was very helpful. It was. No. And that was way before air-conditioned RVs and all of that stuff. Ours was white. The booth we had was wide open. Yeah. I mean, there the wind, the dust, the dirt, everything, birds, anything yeah. came in. <laughs> yeah, I remember. Uh, <laughs> not good. Angry fair goers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it was. I mean, thinking back, it was a lot of fun. It was. <laughs> Don't really want to do it again, but no, it, was it was a lot fun. of fun. <laughs> in hindsight, I think we had fun. Oh, yeah, it was nice. Yeah. We went back every year, so. That's true. So. Yep. 
and Morocco is going through, just to let you know, okay. if, you're, if you're paying attention to, right. the, uh, to the stuff. It is interesting to see um, in the Olympics, as we're watching the opening ceremonies over to my left here, but, um, you know, you have a country with, like, one person, and then you have, like, the United States, where there's hundreds of athletes. So it's like, it's like, there's the one person, like, by themselves, like, carrying the flag. You're like, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> that would kind of suck. Yeah, but. You wouldn't have a team. You wouldn't have that camaraderie, I, I guess. But whatever. They could claim to be the highest scoring person in their country. That's true. That's true. Yes, the most famous Olympian in their, <laughs> in their country. country. <laughs> That's true. Hey, um, James gave me something this morning, and I didn't know that this was happening, so I thought it would be fun to talk about. Okay. And it is actually tomorrow. Um, there's going to be a cruise in at the Margaret Ann Pool in Oak Hill. Oh, cool! So a car show, like cruise in thing, um, and it's going to be tomorrow, July twenty fourth. 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. And the cool thing is they're going to have live entertainment. Um, the Twilights with a Y, mm -hmm. which is hometown girl Twyla McDaniel May singing the Twilights. Um, classic rock 60s, 70s, and 80s. There's going to be door prizes, a People's Choice Award for the um, cars. Uh, great food. They're going to have car hops. That's fun. Okay. Car hops are good. Uh, registration is $10, 3 to 5 p.m. And it's open to cars, all years, makes, and models. And they're going to have, um, you know, it's just going to be fun for the family at the Margaret Ann Pool. And that's tomorrow evening. Okay. So don't say you don't have anything fun to do. I'm ready. Yeah. That's if you don't want to go watch the Crash em Up Derby at the fair. Yeah. Now, earlier in the day, I'll be playing golf. Tomorrow? Yes, we're having our... Is that the chamber? No, that's JVAC. The JVAC, okay. We, of course, our nonprofit group, our board, we support uh, all the adult DD services in yes. Jackson County. We do, we finance, help finance the uh, um, Adult Services Day at the Ohio Hill Country Festival. Uh-huh. Um, help with uniforms for the teams and, yeah. and expenses. Uh, things, some things that don't fit within needs they might have, like uh, lift chairs, things like that that don't fit within, we we provide those. So Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. But anyway, we have a golf tournament tomorrow. Very we good. We could still use another team or two. Well, so there you go. just show up at Franklin Valley at 8 o'clock and play. In the morning? Yeah, it's only 50 bucks a person. We have... We got prizes and cash giveaways. We have um, um, a wonderful lunch. So sold. Sold. <laughs> if there's food, sold. we're sold. Sold. <laughs> and you have a good time. Do you get to cook? No. Then it will be a wonderful lunch. It'll be a wonderful <laughs> lunch, guaranteed. Now. <laughs> what is the lunch? Uh, they're going to have fried chicken. Okay, uh, I'm really sold now. Macaroni. Salad, potato salad, some other stuff. It'll be water. There's going to be pop. That, and it's all free. That's awesome. I mean, awesome. it's all included. Yeah. So. Very good. We'll get out and support. Yes. One of John's many hats that he wears. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like you and Kim Harless, I swear. Okay. <laughs> Take off this One hat, put many on hat, this Many hat. hats, but that's... That's part of it. It is. And uh, if not, you'd just be thoroughly bored. That's a true story. <laughs> Maybe it wouldn't hurt to be a little less bored, but. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to being a little or bored. Or a little more bored. Yeah, yeah, a little more bored, yes. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. So, but yeah, that's awesome. Um, As a matter of fact, since what does the weather look like for all that? So. Are we allowed it, to do the weather now? Yeah, we can do the weather. Jenna's ready for the weather. She pushes all the right buttons and we can do the weather. Okay. Yeah, I'm glad you asked because the county fair continues on. And then we just keep on going up north a little bit more to the Benton County Fairgrounds. Right. So we just move from one to the next. Um, 
So today is looking great, mostly sunny with highs around 85 degrees, mostly clear tonight, lows around 61. On Saturday, mostly sunny and warm, highs around 90 degrees. Um, great for the Crash em Up Derby. That'll be fun. Yep. Um, Sunday, just a little bit of chance of rain in the forecast. Um, highs around 89. Then Monday, partly cloudy, some scattered showers, highs around 88. But then as we move on to the rest of the Benton County Fair, uh, looking like sunshine through the rest of the week. So very good. Absolutely great. And uh, I don't know that the fair boards could really have have asked for better weather than they got this year. They so, really got some good weather. Yeah. And speaking of the fair, um, of course, today is Friday. And at the Jackson County Fair, uh, Showman is Showman kicks off about normally it's about 10 a.m. Yep. 10 a.m. today. Um, and, you know, the big the big thing tonight is to get out and support the kids and the livestock sale. It starts at three, doesn't it? It does starts at three and the order is, and they rotate this order every year, if you're wondering. Okay. The order this year is the turkeys, then rabbits, chickens, lambs, goats, dairy market feeders, dairy steers, steers, hogs, and market beef feeders. Okay. So all of, that is the order of the sale as of this year, okay. because they do kind of rotate them every year to make it fair for everybody, but uh, fair <laughs> <laughs> for everyone. But also, um, 5 p.m., the ride's open, and um, also, besides the livestock sale, the um, at 7 p.m., the Fast Tracks motocross takes place. It's always fun. And that's always a lot of fun. It is fun. So that's a good one. And then tomorrow night, don't forget the horse show uh, during the day starts at 9 a.m. Um, and then tomorrow, and the rides open at 3 tomorrow, just to let you know about that. And then tomorrow at 6 begins the Brett Jenkins Memorial yep. um, Demolition Derby. And that is um, always, always a huge deal. So. Lots and lots of fun there. Lots and um, lots of food there. Yes. So there's still lots of entertainment and fun to be had at the right. Jackson County Fair. If you haven't been up there yet, get there. Yep. Um, your rides are, are your $10 admission fee includes your rides and all the grandstand entertainment. You can go down to the livestock sale, um, support the kids. That's kind of the whole point of the fair, right. after all. Sure. And uh, get down there and do that. So, um yeah, it's been fun. And then uh, next week, we'll be telling you about the Vinton County Fair. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, hey, I have some go. food news. You want some? Yeah, of course. Okay, something brand new from Nestle's. Remember Nestle's Nesquik? I do. Yeah, this little... It's like chocolate milk. Yeah, it says of. on the package you can use milk or water, but nobody wants to use water. No. I you guess got... unless you have to, but Yeah, anyway, it's going to be creamy. Last year is new flavor was hot fudge sundae okay yeah well they have a new flavor this summer it's nesquik's you ready chocolate caramel swirl well that sounds fantastic that's right and just two scoops spoonfuls a little milk stir it up so here's one for you throw some ice cream in it make a smoothie what i was going to tell you is when i was growing up Today is National Vanilla Ice Cream Day, correct? Right. Mm -hmm. So we need to celebrate that, and we need to celebrate our Nesquik. But when I was growing up, I used to get the Nesquik, and I would get vanilla ice cream, and I would just sprinkle it on the top as like a topping oh, of really? my vanilla ice cream. And then by the time, you know, you mix it all together, it becomes this like creamy chocolatey treat. Oh, cool. So there's you a, a yeah. little hint you don't have any hot fudge or chocolate sauce around the house or whatever, but you have some Nesquik, you can just dump it right on the top cool. of your ice cream. I love it. Throw it in a blender, make yeah. a smoothie out of it. You, you can, can do whatever you sure. want. Celebrate that vanilla ice cream today, right. though. Got to. Yes. More food news. Yes. Well, kind of food news. Okay. Uh, according to stats, the average American, uh -huh. the average American, average American, uh, throws away Five hundred and twenty dollars worth of bad fruit every year. I could see that. 
that's three pieces of gone bad every week, and that's a cost of the average American, as you can see, about 10 bucks a week. That's a lot. 70% of us say that we don't eat as much fruit as we should. And the major reason is, is that, you know, a lot of us don't incorporate fruit regularly into our diets. Yep. I think that this stat has been elevated and exaggerated by the sheer fact that it, you go to the store, mm -hmm. you buy bananas, mm -hmm. you have to take those bananas and run to your car <laughs> <laughs> right. and drive as fast as you can to get home before they turn black. <laughs> what is it's it? Like, when you look at these bananas and they know. look great in the store. You put them in the thing. You go home, you take them out, you set them on the counter, you turn around, and when you come back... And the they're gone. They're Zero off. to 100 in three seconds flat. And bananas are one of those that they say not to put in the refrigerator. I know. So it's like, what do I do to stop these things from... Because let's just be honest. You never want to be that guy at the store that takes the bunch of bananas and starts peeling off like individual ones and putting them in your cart. Because really, I mean, the good thing to do would be to go buy a banana every day. Well, that's the only way you're going to do it. Because... It, here's how I do. I take two bananas. I peel them. I'm that guy. I peel them off. Yeah. Go through the cashier. Buy them. You and, are that guy. Yeah, and then eat them on the way home. That's the only <laughs> way that you're going to have a fresh banana. That's <laughs> awesome. Also, kind of, sort of, maybe food news. Okay. Scientific studies say that if your diet is rich in beans, lentils, and nuts, that you'll live longer. Well, that would be kind of like the Mediterranean diet, right? Yeah, beans, lentils, lentils and, and nuts. nuts. Okay. That's the good news. Okay. The bad news is you have more years to eat beans, <laughs> lentils, and nuts. <laughs> but anyway, they say it's good for you. Oh, good for you. Yeah. Well... Speaking of things that are not going to extend your life, <laughs> hot dogs. Hot dogs. Yes. So a few days ago, and we missed it, and I apologize about that, was National Hot Dog Day. Okay. So is, are we finally there yet? In the United States. Oh. They're and showing them. I don't know if they're going through the gauntlet I think or they're. Not. I think they're lining up to go through. Very cool. Um, but this pat, so I have some statistics for you. This will blow your mind okay. about hot dogs. Okay. Okay. Jen, are you ready for this? Okay. She's ready. Um, this past independence day, Americans ate the most hot dogs of the year. Okay. True. Um, Americans <laughs> ate how many Okay, let's. Just, I'll tell you, it's millions. Okay. How many million hot dogs do you think were eaten on Independence Day? Fifty-eight million. Jenna, I'm gonna go towards the like 100 million. Okay, you're you're closer. 150 million hot dogs. I was only off 100 million. <laughs> you were a third of the way there. I know. Um. Yeah, July 4th is the most popular day for hot dogs, but from, um, okay, here's another one. Okay. Now, this is in billions. I'm just, I'll give you this hint. How many hot dogs do Americans eat from Memorial Day to Labor Day, which is peak hot dog season That's in, true. In, in America? So, how many billions of hot dogs do Americans eat from Memorial Day to Labor Day? 20 billion. 20 billion. Is that what she, she said? She said 20 billion. That's a lot of hot That's dogs. Lot. How about 5.3 billion? Well, I will say Jenna won the first one. You win the second one. 7 billion hot dogs. Okay. Yes. It's a lot of hot dogs. You betcha. Um, so what do you think that the favorite topping um, for hot dogs would be, and when I say hot dogs or, uh, topping, I mean like the liquid topping, not like onions or something. So uh, I mean like ketchup, mayonnaise. Yeah. Mustard. Would mustard? Be, be number one. You think? Yeah. What do you think, Jenna? I think it's ketchup. You think it's ketchup? 
Well, um, actually, 68% of people chose mustard and 61% chose ketchup. Okay. Yeah. Um, other favorite toppings included onions at 44%, relish at 41%, chili uh, and cheese at 29%, Sauerkraut, mayonnaise. Who puts mayonnaise on a hot dog? Ew. Ew. Uh, coleslaw, jalapenos, bacon. We're all kind of in there, but but low, and all that sounds gross to me. But um, so, what is? How do you top your hot dog? My favorite is mustard and relish, uh, and my second favorite would be like a hot dog sauce of some kind. Okay. Then you put with the sauce. Then you start putting on onions and. Right. Stuff like that. So I go back to the old shake shop days. Oh, yeah. Where you had the... Foot long with sauce. With sauce <laughs> and, and the loaded foot long, like how it came. Do you remember? A loaded hot dog? So like the, the yeah. actual shake shop hot dog, how it came. Not special, but how it was... Yeah, like how it, what it... If you just ordered like the the normal Shake Shop like hot dog, it came with sauce and do you remember what else? Mustard, ketchup. Came with mustard and onions, sauce, mustard and onions. Okay, mustard yep. and onions. I made many of those. That's okay. why I know that. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I thought that was really interesting. So, Jenna, what's your favorite way to eat a hot dog? I feel like it depends on the day because sometimes I'll do just ketchup and mustard and other days I'll put like sauerkraut on my hot dogs. Yeah. Just depends how I'm feeling. Yeah, I think I guess it depends me too. But like, if I had a choice, it would be like the skyline coney kind of thing going on with like the skyline and the cheese and maybe some onion. But if I just met a barbecue, I would go with your mustard and relish or mustard and sauerkraut or something like that. My favorite way to eat hot dogs is ten at a time. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> All of them. <laughs> So what do you feel, okay, so this other, the other question about hot dogs, um, also, by the way, the New York style hot dog topped the regional hot dog of the survey, and a New York style hot dog is an all beef hot dog with steamed onions and yellow mustard, and then second was the Chicago style dog, which is the hot dog with mustard, relish, onion, a pickle spear, peppers, tomato slices, and celery salt on a poppy seed bun. There's a lot going on with the Chicago really? dog. Really? Yeah. Um, but yeah, so then this company came out, and we talked about it here, but this totally flips me out, where they came out with the patty-like hot dog. How do you feel about that? Oh, yeah, they've come out with... Uh... Hot I just dogs feel like that's all that are wrong. in a patty, so if you don't have a hot dog bun, you can still have a hot dog. Yes. I don't know. I close your eyes; it'll taste the same. I I just don't know about it because to me, it just seems like eating a bologna sandwich or something, and <laughs> I can't true. stand that. So, yeah. But anyway, a lot of people um, are not digging the round, the round hot dog patty thing. They don't. Mm -mm. Uh -uh. I have some sort of kind of. Food news. Okay. Uh, Union County Sheriff's Department clocked a guy going 114 miles an hour. Like here in Ohio? Here in Ohio. Okay. <clears throat> and they, you know, started to chase him, lost him. <clears throat> and with a little <clears throat> investigative work. Yeah. They found, uh, found him, they smelled the, where he had burned rubber to round a corner. <laughs> went down the street saw this car parked in the driveway felt the hood and was still really hot I'll bet knocked on the door and the guy came to the door and he admitted he was the one who did it but he said there was a good reason for going 114 Okay. he wanted to get home before his pizza got cold I mean, you got to give the guy A for effort. I mean, there's nothing better than a, <laughs> a nice, hot pizza, you know? <clears throat> by the oh way, my gosh. and he apologized, but they accepted his apology by putting him in the cruiser. 
I don't think he ever got to finish his he pizza. He probably didn't get to eat his pizza, did he? Nope. Darn it. Anyway. <clears throat> that is so funny. Um, yeah, I'm not thinking that's a good excuse. No, it's not. <clears throat> As you could have, you know, run over a lot of people and getting home with your hot pizza. Right. It was a very selfish decision. <clears throat> Well, I will say, if you ever look at some pizza delivery people, though, that's about how fast they drive. Okay. Well, <laughs> you see one of those things on the top of the car, you better look yeah, out. Here I, they come. I'm trying to get there in 15 minutes or less. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yep. That's crazy. So, are you a Dolly Parton fan? Sure. Yeah. I mean, doesn't everybody <clears throat> like Dolly Parton? Yeah, I think so. She's uh, Dolly and the rest of her. Uh huh. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so she did a um, interview the other day with Tim McGraw. Okay. You know, country music singer Tim McGraw. And I just thought it was cute because, you know, in truly Dolly fashion, she always has some zingers that, sure. that come out of her. But she said they asked her about, you know, her favorite, um, like, movie parts or what she thought of when she played uh, in the movies. And she said that she had been asked to do numerous movies, but she just didn't think she was ready until 9 to 5 mm -hmm. came out. And I thought it was really funny because she said 9 to 5, it was a girl from Texas, and she was so much like me anyway. And she said basically she's always played parts that are kind of similar to her personality, okay. which if you've ever seen Dolly in a movie is sure. uh, pretty... It's Dolly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so that was not that far fetched. Um, then she went on to say, and I am quoting Dolly here, so please don't get mad okay. at me. Even the best little whorehouse in Texas, although I made a better whore than I did a secretary. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, but it was still parts of my personality that I could relate to. But then she went on to say about um, nine to five, which I thought was really, really funny. And she was also in Steel Magnolias. Right. Where she played a beautician, and she said, had she not made it in the music world, she had planned on becoming a beautician. So, again, playing a part that she kind of lived. But, um, I mean, that would have been a lot of hairspray of Dolly trying to fix everybody's hair the same as hers. <laughs> but, uh, no, she said in 9 to 5, um, they had already cast Jane Fonda and Lily Tomlin, who were big at the time. And she said, well, if there's any time to start, this would be now, because if it's a big hit... I can share in the glory of it. If it's failure, I can blame it all on them and I'll walk away free because <laughs> they were big stars at the time. That's Dolly. I'm like, that is so her. But for her to say that, I just thought she is just so stinking cute and uh, funny and looks pretty much exactly the same as she did, you know, I know. 40 years ago, I know. which is disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> you betcha. <laughs> well, I have some... Money news? Oh, do you have some money? No, but I have oh, money news. Either. And this is, comes from San Francisco. They're doing away with their green citywide trash cans. And their new Board of Supervisors voted this week to approve a new designer prototype trash can. There's a catch. Okay. These trash cans cost between $12,000 and $20,000 $20, Twelve thousand and twenty thousand dollars each for a trash can. Trash can. Yeah, right. There are new design smart cans, and you can get three different models: uh, salt and pepper, slim silhouette, and soft square. For San Francisco. Have they lost their what? What does the twenty thousand dollar trash can do? <laughs> I Googled it and looked it up, and it just, it's nice looking, but, and they say they're a smart trash can, so. What does a smart trash can do? Um, talks to you? I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Makes, mean, it's smart enough to make you spend $12,000. Right. <laughs> you could buy a lot of Husky trash cans that's, for $12,000. That's dollars. true. I'm that's just true. saying. Just saying. And more uh, money news. As you know, this, especially during the pandemic, but it's still going on, where uh, a lot of businesses were asking for exact change. 
because of the yeah, chain shortage? Yeah, as people were, um, yeah, the banks, a lot of banks closed their branches or office, like in, inside, so you couldn't get change. Right. Yeah. And you could, and a lot of people, they're trying to get change. They want their change. They don't get change, and they start giving the cashier their two cents worth. The only problem is they don't have two cents. <laughs> they haven't got their change yet. But I always, I thought about this. You go into a store, and I understand this, and they turn to you and they say, would you like to round it up, mm -hmm. you know, for the food bank? Mm -hmm. So why don't they just turn to you and say, would you like to round it down? <laughs> why don't we ever get that? Yeah, that is true. <laughs> really? We don't get that stuff. It should be like customer appreciation day. And That's you get right. to round down. Round down. That's right. Yeah. So are you one that always says, yeah, round it up? Yeah, I'm involved with. I mean, it's like they guilt you into it, yeah, right? I'm involved with, you know, food pantries. So, um, yeah, I always say yes. <clears throat> I do unless I have the, if I'm getting something for the business and put it on the credit card because I figure the accountant's really not going <laughs> to understand what the heck the rounding up right. is. But um, if it's me personally, I always round it up because I feel like it's it's for a good cause. It, it, it It's just is. sense. Yeah. It's not like you know, $100 mm -hmm. or anything. Okay. <clears throat> also, if you're familiar with the phrase, pretzels make me thirsty, or if you're familiar with the phrase, soup Nazi. Yes. That's Seinfeld stuff. No soup for you. <laughs> no soup for you. Anyway, last, two years ago in July, was the 30th anniversary of Seinfeld. Really? Yeah, and... Legos designed this, uh, the Seinfeld set in with Legos. Did they? Yeah. Well, this year, you can now buy it. It's seventy nine ninety nine, and you can. All buy, right, Jenna, you got to look it up. Yeah, you can buy your own Lego set. Okay. It looks like the Seinfeld, you know, Jerry's apartment. That's what it looks like. Okay. So, and it has um, his apartment. It always includes the bicycle that he never rode. <laughs> okay. Uh, the characters are in it. Little characters of Jerry. And oh, Wayne. no way. Yeah. George, Kramer, and Newman. Yeah. And uh, they even have some of the accessories. There's uh, the fishing rod and the loaf of marble rye bread, you know, all that kind of stuff. And there's even a festivus. What's that called? Festivus? Festivus. Festivus pole. Yes. I'm not a Festivus fan, by the way, but yeah. Festivus Pole. Festivus Pole. Did you find it? It's She's only $79.99. She's in the process. Okay. Yeah, we got to see a picture of this. Okay. So then, okay, so these Lego sets, you get the, you buy them in a, like a box and sure. then you have to put it together, right? Yeah, yeah. Do they come with instructions of how to oh, put yeah. it or is it like a mystery? No, you I don't, I've never done Legos. Yeah. So. Yeah. You get instructions. <clears throat> I know recently it was Star Wars. They did a lot of Legos. A lot of Star Wars. Yeah, yeah. and it comes with instructions. Yeah. Not did you find it? I easy. did, yeah. Okay. So Not Jenna's going to... Okay, here we go. Oh my gosh, that is hysterical. <clears throat> and it really has, like, the people. Yeah. There oh, it is. there it is. I wonder how big, does it say like the dimensions of it? Like how, I wonder how big it is. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. How fun. Yeah. So Lots that, of Seinfeld fans. There you go. The uh, show about nothing. <laughs> I never watched Seinfeld. I don't know where I like got, somehow it was in between my generation or mm -hmm. something. Right. Did, were you a Seinfeld fan? It, I watched it. I, I didn't become what you would call a fan because that means fanatic. Yeah. But I would I enjoyed watching it sometimes. <clears throat> and, of course, you know, even Jerry admitted that the whole show is about nothing. Yeah, it's a I show mean, about nothing. There's nothing. It's nothing. <laughs> so every once in a while, you know, I would watch it. And since it was going nowhere. Yeah. And a lot of things would, would key on words or, you know... Stupid like stuff. Like inside jokes right. and yeah, dumb stuff. Yep. S stuff on your teeth and, you know, <laughs> double dipping and, you know, at a party with There chips. was a time where George's fiance died because she licked too many envelopes. He'd bought the, he'd bought the, 
the cheap envelopes for their wedding and she licked them all and died of glue poisoning. <laughs> and it was like funny. <laughs> that's not, I know. That's wrong. It, it was all wrong and true. But yeah. anyway, I, I, I watched it. I enjoyed some of it. Kramer usually, but. Yeah, he was a hoot. Yeah. Speaking of, do you remember when you actually had to lick stamps? Oh, yeah. And envelopes. When was that? Uh, yesterday. <laughs> yeah, I know. Like, I remember still licking there. stamps. They're still there. Just saying. I know. Now they're all in books somewhere in a collection. I know. Yeah. I, I have a question for you. Okay. I have an answer. Okay. Do you like happy endings? Uh, in, in what regard? <laughs> 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 you know, most of us like happy endings, and you always see well, all sure. these videos on um, on Facebook or YouTube about you know happy events and all that. Yeah. Well, there's a, a new video out of a wedding proposal, and the guy um, decided to propose marriage to this lady at a Boston Red Sox game, and okay. he was standing on the dugout with her. You know, the roof of the dugout. How did they get down there? <clears throat> well, just climb over the fence. They probably, he probably had it prearranged. Okay. And she was there and, and looking, you know, like, what's going on here? And he got down on one knee and opened the box to give her the ring. Yeah. And she shook her head no and ran away. <laughs> it's on, it's on, <laughs> it's a video. Check it out. <laughs> no, that's so sad. I know. It, there was not a happy ending. No. Rule number one <laughs> of proposals, make sure she's going to say yes before you yeah, commit to because, that, you know, especially only, on national TV. Not only was it caught on camera, but, you know, with people's phones, but they had it on the big jumbo screen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lordy. Okay. Yeah, that would be bad. That's bad. Yeah, I mean, okay, what is... What is wrong with your relationship that he's here and she's running away? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, the, maybe he should have talked to her yeah, first. Yeah, <laughs> perhaps we had, should have had maybe that conversation yeah. before. Maybe not when the proposal, but maybe he should give her an opportunity to say yay or nay. Yeah. like <clears throat> That they might get married. Hey, like, where do you see this going before, right. <clears throat> you know, we do this on national TV? Yeah. Okay. But Oops. anyway. Poor guy. Not, I know. Aww. Not a happy ending. No, I feel bad about that. Yeah, that's that's really sad. It was a guy thing. <laughs> I guess. I'm trying to think. I thought I had something funny here for you, but oh, I know. This was so cute, and I thought you'd appreciate this. Okay. And you know, the um, there's been a lot of times where people have called nine one one, and it's been really inappropriate. Oh. And like, you know, you know, calling nine one one because you're out of catch up or something right. is like not okay. You deliver, yeah, right. But this little girl and the sheriff could have gotten really, really angry. So the nine one one down in uh, Mississippi, Collins, Mississippi. There was this 911 call comes through. So the dispatcher answers the phone. And this little girl um, who is six, her name is Myla Santa Maria. Okay. Pretty name. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. And uh, she, <laughs> she said, I need y'all. This is a six-year-old called 911. I need y'all to tell the sheriff that I love him and I love y'all. Isn't that the sweetest thing? And so instead of getting mad, the dispatcher said, I will make sure that I get that to him, okay? And so then the, they went ahead and called the sheriff and told him. And he decided to give a special thank you. And he surprised her and her family at their home by giving her school supplies and a special sheriff's department coin. Nope. Isn't that so cute? It is cute. But she just, it's like out of the mouths of babes, you know? Like, she was just probably being so heartfelt about that. Cute kid. <laughs> yes. She's getting ready to go into the first grade, so she just called the sheriff to tell him that she loves him. 
<laughs> That's good. I bet they don't get those calls very often. I say 100% of the time right. they don't get those calls. 99.99%. There's a guy by the name of Ryland Dickman who is 17 years old. Okay. And he just graduated. Okay. He graduated from college at 17. Wow. And then two weeks later, he got his high school diploma. Wait. He, gradu he graduated. What? He got a bachelor's degree from Liberty University. He had been studying, and then he got that degree because their graduation was first, and then he got his <laughs> high school diploma two weeks later. Does that make you feel like you're an underachiever? Oh, uh, very much so. <laughs> oh, man. Yes. He was the university's youngest graduate to earn a bachelor's degree. That's pretty cool. 17. Yeah, we got our high school diplomas back when you had to lick stamps. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's true. And it was several years later about the college. <clears throat> but no, I don't understand that at all. How did he do that? I don't know. And, you know, when I was one of those students, I got fairly good grades. But I had to work hard at it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess I was born stupid and I was trying to overcome it the rest <laughs> of my life. I mean, Whatever. I, I'm serious. I mean, I got A's and B's in school. Every once in a while, I'd mess up but yeah. man i had study like crazy well they say actually though people um that have to study more unless you're just so sm smart that whatever but you do better in college because you're used to studying yeah whereas people that you know kind of didn't have that much trouble in high school mm -hmm. but go to college then you have to learn how to study and you don't know Okay. So see, you were way better off ahead okay. of time. Thank you. <laughs> it's my story and I'm sticking to it. I know. Yeah. Hey, and speaking about, of the... You're about 50 some years late with that, <laughs> but that's okay. Thank you. <laughs> speaking of the Olympics, here's a little trivia question for okay. you. Um, and this kind of surprised me, so I thought it was interesting. The Olympic Games um, were first held in what year? Anyone know? Don't you Google it. What's your guess? Olympic style games or our Olympic the games? The Olympic games. Like the ones say, that are the starting Olympic today. started in Greece. Mm-hmm. Way, way, way back. So. Yes, the first know. games were held in Athens uh, in 1896. Okay. They I were, had the place, but I didn't Yeah, really no, you were good. That's Thank really you. good. Um, they featured nine sports, 43 events, 14 nations, and no women. Mm -hmm. Women were allowed into the Paris Games in 1900, but only 22 of them. Um, but I guess my question to you is, okay, the Olympics have been canceled three times. In 1640 and 44, which was during World War I and World War II, and then, of course, Tokyo got postponed. Not canceled, but right. postponed, of course. Um, so what countries have hosted the most Olympic Games? That's my trivia question for you. Oh, which country? Yeah, which countries have hosted the most Olympic Games? And I was surprised by this. It's more spread out than what you would think, I guess. Really? Yeah. I really haven't been tracking that. but Yeah. So, believe it or not, the United States has hosted the most, but it's only four. Okay. So they really have spread them out. Uh, first Olympics in St. Louis in 1904, and then 32 and 84 in LA and 96 in Atlanta. And then we will host uh, for the fifth time in 2028. Okay. Uh, the UK has held three Olympic Games. London has hosted each of the three times in 08, 48, and 2012. So, really, the, the top is America, and it's four. <laughs> four, okay. three, and then two is Australia in 56 and in 2000. Two in France. Two in Germany. Two in Greece. Two in Japan. Okay. And that's it. And every other country has just hosted it once. So Belgium, Brazil, Canada, China, Finland, Italy, Mexico, the Netherlands, um, 
Russia, Spain, South Korea, and Sweden have all only hosted the Olympics once. It just seems like it, it would be more than that. Yeah. But there you go. So the U United States has hosted yeah. the most at four. We just can't say no, I guess. I guess. <laughs> We're just glutton for punishment. That's right. <laughs> but, you know, my guess is, to be honest with you, I mean, the Olympics, let's just be honest. I mean, it has, it costs the country. Oh, it does. Tons so of So much money. And they have to literally build the entire stadiums, housing, they all of a, that stuff. They every build time. a small city is what yes. they build. Yeah. And they pay for it. Yeah. So I could see why countries probably wouldn't be all that, while being very cool, thrilled to host the Olympic Games. And you think about Japan, the only thing that you would have going on good for you would be bringing all those people in for your economy, and they have none of that this year. So they spent out all this money and don't have any tourists or fans coming in. Nope. It's wild. That's some bad luck. It is. Yep. It hasn't been a good year. No, it has for not. Some, for us last year. Better this year. A little better this year, for mm -hmm. sure. That's right. Um, well, oh gosh, I guess we have to get out of here for the day. We're out of time. Yeah. Don't forget Olympic ceremonies still going on. So uh, you can tune over to that. Um, Jackson County Fair does wind down this weekend. Uh, tonight, don't forget livestock sale and fast track motocross. And then tomorrow, uh, the demolition derby. So still lots of entertainment to uh, see. All right. Sounds yep. good. Good weather for the weekend. So we hope that you enjoy it. Um, I don't think I'm going to be here on Monday. So we're going to figure something out. Okay. Surprise. You may have to come do the show. <laughs> Oh, no. I don't know. Okay. Or uh, James and I were talking. We may revisit some of the um, just kind of neat the stuff that we've done. Oh, that'd over, be cool. That's over good. the past year or so, uh -huh. and and do that as well. So I'm not sure. Um, as far as I know, I will not be here Monday, but we'll be back here on Tuesday, and we'll party. Sounds like a plan. Yeah. So have a wonderful weekend, everyone, and we'll be right back here. Um, on Monday was something fun for you, we promise. So have a wonderful weekend and thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.